Hello everyone, it's Mahin. So we all know that minus one multiplied by minus one is equal to plus one, right? We learn it at middle school probably, we use it at middle school, we use it in high school, at university when you do mathematics. But how many of us really know why it's true? You know, how many of us really know the proof of it? Uh, because I mean, there is a really, I mean, we basically take it for granted, right? We we just take it for granted as a formula, but I mean, there is a proof of it and there's a very, the proof is very cute, you know, very neat little proof. So in this video, I'll try to show you the proof of, of this, this, you can call it a theorem maybe. Uh, very simple, but it's, it's very beautiful. So the only thing that you will know, you know, th that you will need to know to understand the proof that I will do, the only thing that you need to know is that, let's say, you imagine you have a number x. Um, if we subtract x from x, subtract x from itself, we'll have zero, right? This is a basic axiom. I cannot prove this, no one can prove it actually. So in mathematics, there are some things called axiom and axiom is something that is self-explanatory and that doesn't need any proof. That is basically, yeah, I and mean, it explains itself. So if we have a number and we subtract that number from that number, we'll have zero. This is self-explanatory and this we assume this to be an axiom and we assume this to be true, right? And also it's true uh, based on the very definition of the minus operator, right? So we'll just, use only this only this idea only this axiom to show you the proof all right so let me start doing the proof so let's say we have number a it doesn't matter what kind of number it is except zero it cannot be zero so let's say you have a number and then a minus a what we'll have because this axiom based on this axiom we know that it, it has to be zero right but there will be one thing that I will add is that a is not equal to zero. I'm assuming this, right? I'm assuming this thing that I have a number a and I'm subtracting a from itself and then I have zero and I'm assuming that a is not zero. You'll see why I'm assuming this, you'll see it later because it's necessary to assume that a is not zero here. Now, let's have another number, right? Minus a. Now what I will do is that I will also subtract minus a from minus a, right? So minus a and I'm going to subtract minus a from itself. And what you'll have? Well, because of this axiom, this great axiom, we'll also have zero here, right? So a minus a is equal to zero, minus a minus minus a is also zero, right? But so what does it mean if both of them are zero? It means that this to be equal, right? So because as both of them equals to zero, they has to be equal. So we can write as like I can write it like this: a minus a on the left side. On the right side, I will I will write this part: minus a minus minus a, right? So we have this new equation we got. Now what I will do is that I will add a on both sides. Of the equation because of the some really basic rule of algebra that we learn from middle school or high school maybe we know that we can do this we know that if we add same number same amount on both sides of an equation the equality will hold so we'll have let's say a minus a right i'm gonna add plus i'm gonna add a here right again the same way similarly i'm gonna add a here right now what I will do is that I'm going to rearrange the equation so let's say I can I mean there there are not a lot of uh, there are no need to rearrange but on this side I can just write it a minus a plus a uh, in case of this side I can just I'm going to write a first here I'm going to write a here and then I'm going to write the remaining two terms I'm going to write minus a minus minus right now I'm going to put bracket here too. Again, because of this great axiom that we had earlier, a minus a is equal to zero, right? So I can just write just write a here because you know a minus a is equal to zero. So I don't need to write. I'm going to just write a here. And also in case of this one, 
I'm just going to write uh, this. This is also zero. I'm just going to write minus minus because this part is zero. This part they will vanish. You know. So we'll have a. We have a equal minus minus a. Right. Now what does it really mean that minus minus a? Let me just say something here like minus when we say that see that minus i can just write it like this minus one and i can write this minus as another minus one and then a right they're the same thing this two parts of this and this they're exactly the same thing right now so we have finally we got this equation here so what can we get from here what can we conclude from this equation well first let me wipe it wipe this part out uh, all right. and let me write it back here so i have a equal minus one multiplied by minus one and then a right now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to divide both sides by a do you remember that I assume that a cannot be zero? I assumed it because I knew that I have to divide both sides by zero. If a was zero, if a were zero, I should say, then I cannot divide both sides by a because we cannot, in mathematics, you cannot divide a number by zero. It's a crime, basically. It's a mathematical crime. It's prohibited mathematics. No one knows uh, if you divide any number by zero, what you will get. It's, it's basically undefined, you know, in mathematics. So you cannot divide any number by zero. Um, so as we know that a is not zero, we can do it. We're going to divide both sides by a. And again, because of the really basic rule of algebra, we know that if we divide both sides of an equation by the same number, the equality will hold. So this is valid. Now what we'll have, we'll have a divided by a is like one. We have one here. And we have minus one multiplied by minus one and then again you have one here if we multiply any number by one we'll have that number so we can write one on this side and we have minus one multiplied by minus one which is what we really wanted to prove in the first place so yeah that's basically the proof and i hope you like this proof